Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, we are in the month of July. And that's the second half of the year. I know God's plan concerning you. They are good, so he said. Praise God. And I believe him. His thoughts concerning us, they are good. Stop observing the wrong things. God's word will never change. Once God has spoken, he has spoken. It doesn't mean it will, it, will, it will cause everything to align when you want. But this is the truth. Eventually, everything will align. So what do I do while I'm waiting for things to align? Keep moving. Praise God. Keep moving in the direction that God has spoken to you about. And you will see his glory. Father, we give you praise for today. Lord, you manifest your truth in our hearts. There's so much, Lord, you're bringing to pass in these days. And Lord, we submit to you that you will carry us according to your plan and fulfill the visions of your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, we, we began yesterday talking about on the subject, following to know. Following to know. Praise God. And I'm, I started sharing um, some important thoughts with you. Now, those things I was I, I began to share with you yesterday, it's so important because the season we're entering is a season where the relevance of this truth will be made manifest. I was telling you yesterday how the Lord began, you know, teaching me concerning tithing. And it's it's such a wonder that the there is an attack on that subject. It's such a wonder that there is there, there are people setting confusion concerning the subject of tithing. And that's to tell you, you see, when you see Satan coming from all different angles, and I always say this, you see, whenever I see anyone talking on the subject of tithing, whether for or again, I love to really listen to them. And not because I'm trying to find out. No, because see, when, when, when the Spirit of God have taught you something, and, and mind you, God is wise. He's wiser than any man that would ever, that I've ever lived, that will ever live on this earth. He's wise. So when the Lord says something, your own part is to believe Him. You will understand it eventually when you believe Him. But you see, you don't, you don't use the events of the day to counter what God has said. You'll be making a big mistake for your life and it may cost you. you. See, right from the beginning, for example, it was God that looked at man and said, it is not good that man should be alone. He said it. Now, meaning... Marriage was God's wisdom. Understand what I mean by that? I, marriage was not the thought on marriage. The thought of a man having a helpmate was not a situational kind of thing. No. Now, I've heard people say, uh, God created the woman. Uh, how do you put it now? As an afterthought or the woman was not in God's original plan. It was when God saw the woman suffering that he now thought, ah, this man needs help. Let me give him a helper. No, you see, when you don't understand the scriptures, like I told you last week, you err. Jesus said you err because you don't know the scripture or the ability of God. In Genesis 1, he says, male and female created he them. Now, that was where God created everything. Genesis chapter 1. See, he created everything. Now, that's the father's creation. 
So he created the finality of his creation is found in Genesis 1. Since he finished creating in Genesis 1, he has not created anything again. So what do you mean? Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't and he won't. He's finished his work. Well, what do you mean? When, when you, what do you understand from the, the statement, the works we have finished from the foundation of the world? You see, as we live life, there are certain things that are situational, you see? But then there are certain things that are core. And those are the things, I say, as a child of God, the more you, you walk with the Lord, that's what I tell you this, 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 what we're talking about, following to know. The more you walk with the Lord, the more you begin to understand. The more you walk with the Lord, the more you begin to understand. That's when you are a believer. If you are not a believer, if you are one who's just trying to, um, you know, some people, I'm, I, I get amazed when I hear some people talk, even preachers preach. I get amazed as though they are, uh, this whole thing we are doing is, uh, is a contest. You know, who knows better? So we have arguments and counter arguments. Hey! What are you arguing over? Our thoughts as God's children should be simple. What does our Father want? And that should solve the problem. Because the one we're talking about, he's alive. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? He's alive and, 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 and people are here arguing over something that he said. You see, so sad that you will get to find out that a lot of people, even preachers that preach, are walking in unbelief. They walk in unbelief. So the moment you get into unbelief, your mind starts working. I'm telling you the truth. Your mind starts working. Your mind starts trying to figure out. See, we, we are not called to figure out things for ourselves. We are called to... I can't, say, why did God give us a break? This is why he gave us a break. To analyze what he is saying to us. That's why he gave us a break. To analyze what he is saying to us. Now, if you leave what he is saying and begin to use your brain for something else, definitely the information you're beginning to process will take you in a different direction from God. Cain and Abel, children born from the same womb. But one thought he was smarter. So he, he, he chose to do things his own way. The other just decided to follow. And so Abel brought the sacrifice before the Lord and God accepted the sacrifice. Cain brought the sacrifice and God rejected Cain's sacrifice. Why did God reject Cain's sacrifice? Because God did not accept the person of Cain. Why didn't God accept Cain's the person of Cain, because Cain chose to walk in his own way. He didn't bring his mind to follow the Lord. So you don't do things the way you like and just wake up one day and say, okay, it's time to offer sacrifice. Let's go offer sacrifice. He won't accept your sacrifice because he wants you first. If your heart is not in your sacrifice, he will not accept it. That's why Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, he says, God loves a cheerful giver. The Amplified Version puts it this way, whose heart is in his giving. If God cannot find your heart in your giving, he doesn't accept it. Don't think God is looking for money. He's not. <laughs> no, he's not. He has everything he needs. So don't ever think that, eh, after all, eh, let me give you so that it's not, he doesn't, listen, it's not every offering you take to church that God accepts. The church will accept it, yes. Doesn't mean God will accept it. When Cain brought that offering to the Lord, God did not accept it. 
Now, do you wonder what happened to it after God did not accept it? When people give burnt offerings, not because, I mean, bring your burnt offering to burn. doesn't mean God will accept it. He's not bound to accept it because you put fire on it. He's not bound to accept an offering because you dropped it on the altar. No. Leave it there. The, the church will carry it and do whatever they want to do with it. It doesn't mean God have accepted it. Before God accepts your offering, he will accept you first. See, so when from the very beginning, God looked at it and says, hey, it's not good for man to be alone, so I'll make him a help it. And he created the woman. It was not an afterthought. He made them male and female. Okay? Now, in the execution, I've told you this before. In Genesis 1, the father was doing the job of creation. And then he created everything that needed to be created. He finished everything. Now, from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4, the Holy Ghost started doing his work of creation. What was the Holy Ghost doing? He was now bringing to pass what the Father has created. The physical work of creation started in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. And, and the physical work of creation didn't happen in seven days. The physical work of creation happened in six days rather. The physical work of creation is still going on. It started in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4, but then it's still going on. And guess what? In the physical work of creation, Things go by cause and effect. See? So, um, he will have to create land because man have to eat. You understand what I'm talking about? So, now, he didn't just create man and then say, oh, uh, according to the creation, woman, God created woman also. Okay, let me uh, form a woman also. No. No. Picture that story. See, I'm... Um, I'm, I'm setting a foundation in your mind so that you begin to understand how God thinks or how God works. I want you to see. Let me show you something here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis chapter 2. Now, if you if you if you watch. Verse Genesis chapter 1 and verse 24. I want to show you something. It says, Then chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 24. It says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind. Follow me. Cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth each according to its kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to his kind, cattle upon cattle according to his kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to his kind. And God saw that it was good. Follow me. After that, now watch, this is Genesis chapter 1. After that, I say verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. So now in Genesis 1, you find that God created the living creatures, animals, and everything, okay, right? And then God, when he was done with that, he says, let us make man. And God created man. And that's in Genesis chapter 1. Now watch this. In Genesis chapter 2, Watch this now. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help, a helper comparable to him. So now God had created man and man was doing his work. And then God looked at man and says, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help that is suitable for him. All right? Then watch this. Next verse. 
out of the ground, the Lord for God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the earth and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Now, in Genesis 1, it, we saw that God created the animals first. But over here, we are seeing now that God created man first, or man was formed first. Now, it's... Man has been created, and now man is going about doing his work and doing everything. And then God says, hmm... It's not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a help me. Then what did God do first? He went to the ground and he began to form animals. And everyone he forms, he brings to Adam. Adam, look at this one and what will you call it? Now, it wasn't a naming, naming ceremony. Please understand this. Adam was not, God was not doing a naming ceremony with Adam. So they will be passing one after the other. Oh, this one is lion. Oh, this one is a goat. Oh, this one is a sheep. No, sir. God, God was in search of a help that is suitable for man. That's what costs. I said in, from Genesis chapter 2, creation, the, the formation of things is by cause and effect. Okay, so... He, he created the lion and then he brought the lion to see. Adam, th there's a new, you know, like you say, there's a new kid on the block. Where <laughs> God. And I said, okay, what, what's this one now? And Adam will spend time with that animal, spend time with that animal. And then eventually, and I said, you're a lion. When he's exhausted, you know, playing around with the lion, I said, you're a lion. That's how lion got its name. And then God says, okay, maybe, maybe I should do something bigger than man, you know. And then he goes and he forms a very gigantic animal and brings to Adam, whoa, wow. Ah, your legs are so thick. <laughs> and then, ah, you, your big ears, your, 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 everything about you is just so massive. He said, you're just an elephant. And that's how the name stuck. And then God formed from big to small. He Watch this now. I'm not making this up. Watch this. Says, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the earth. Did you see that? Even birds. And brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature... That was its name. So, Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the earth, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. So now, Adam had compared all the animals that God was creating. I am a this search for a wife did it wasn't just a one day thing. <laughs> God. Imagine how many years it took. It's, you know, sometimes when we read these things, just uh, and then and then uh, no, no, it took it took a good while. Praise God. Imagine now we, we were not told how long Adam spent with each animal. Maybe a few hours, maybe a whole day. Imagine if God, <laughs> imagine, imagine if Adam spent a whole day to conclude on the name of an animal. That's why you need to understand it was not a, a naming ceremony. It was a search for a helper for Adam. So Adam may have tried all these animals in several ways. You know, put the put stick on you. Okay, you, you're good for plowing. You, you're, you, you're good for, you know, dog. Oh, you're good. You, you're a very good guy. You, you know, and all that. You know. He finished naming them. And imagine the last one God said, okay, let's, let's throw this one at him. Remember, God has finished creating all these things in Genesis chapter 1. He created them with his word. There is no way the Holy Ghost will create something that God has not created, okay? So now, in the creation of all these things, he didn't just say, let there be beds. And all the beds. No, 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 no. Adam needs a helpmate. Okay, so let's go to the original plan began to create one after the other, one after the other, until he was done creating everything 
the Father created. Then he says, all right, Adam, you've checked all through no one, no one, sir. Then he caused him to sleep. And then he took his rib and formed the woman. Now, the father has already created the woman in Genesis chapter 1. Are you following what I'm saying? And so Adam woke up and saw another creature. He, I mean, he just finished the last creature. Now he sees another one. And then he spent time with her and everything going on. And like, ah. Then he came to that conclusion and said, This one is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I'll call her woman. Because obviously she was taken out of man. Praise God. Now, why am I sharing this with you? The wisdom of God brought that to be. But hey, guess what? It wasn't outside of the things that God created. My time is up. Praise God. I hope you understand what I'm sharing with you. I'll see you tomorrow. I pray for you today. That you will find wisdom in your heart and stay with the Lord. And to know something in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye.